Good morning. Hello, everyone. Make no mention of the chop job I got at the barbershop. <laughs> have you ever been to, have you ever moved or gone to a new place and went to the barbershop or most of you ladies to the hairdresser? Let's say the hairdresser. And they look at your head and when you leave there, <laughs> and when you leave there, it's like, I'm not ever going back to that place again. Have you ever done that? Any of you ladies ever done that? All you saw was orange shirt. You missed baby JL. Well, good. I'll hush about it then. I did lose a little bit of weight at the barbershop, but, um, but uh, anyway. We got the, the ears are lowered slightly. Uh, like, y'all see this? What is that? You can't leave that right there. I'm going to have to go back and get my, I'm going to have to get a refund. I'm going to have to get a refund. Maybe if put it put my hair back, I'll take it somewhere else and get cut off. Up over a pound. Will not have naughty snack and egg, uh, egg excellent day. Uh-oh. That's not good. Well, it's when you learn something. You're not getting the text messages. All right. Looks good. I'm glad you like it. It's good from way over there. Get up close. It's pretty rough. Yeah, okay. So I did learn something else on text messages so everybody knows. Uh, Harriet, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. Um, this is what I learned. Um, so one of our members who had recently unsubscribed from a text list and um, to caveat that it was my text list, okay? Unsubscribed from my text list, not because she didn't want to get text from me anymore. Hey, Jamie, but because she thought if she unsubscribed from the text list, that whatever the quirks were that were going on with the text list, if she just got back in and resubscribed, I guess is the right word. If she subscribed again to the text list, it was it would fix everything. So here's what I learned. Um, it's called unstop. <laughs> okay, if you've ever typed stop. Let me make sure I'm not telling you wrong. I don't want to tell you wrong because I know sometimes I don't, I'm not, I don't believe myself to be that much. I'm right. I'm right. Unstop. U-N-S-T-O-P. So that's how you unlock your number when you mistakenly send stop to our text list, okay? Unstop. Good to know, right? Good to know. So if you're having problems with the text alerts, let me, let me, and Harriet, you may never have sent stop to the, the number, the number to write, let me type this in the, the chat so everybody can see it. The number is 888-831-1207. Okay, 888-831-1207. And you're going to want to type twas, okay? Twas, I know it's it's um, corny, but it works. Now, if that if that tells you you're already in the list, you should be good to go. If you don't receive a text message um, after, uh, that says welcome to the text list or or if you're not already in there it should say welcome to the tech welcome to the, the challenge text list um try send after you've sent twas try sending unstop to that number and um lord there's at least three people i know that need this information so hopefully 
uh, maybe if they're not doing the challenge, they'll see the uh, instructions and we'll try that on their phone as well. Uh, good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Buckus. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Harriet. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Amy, uh, Jamie and Jenna. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Millie, Patricia, Robin, Shanda. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Tammy. Tammy had a great question this morning too. Good morning, Tanya. So glad everybody's been able to, to get in that did. The, the cool thing, whether y'all, y'all might not think it's so cool, I do. There was 22 registrants this morning when I turned on the Zoom, um, this particular class in my Zoom account. There's 20 of us here. So that's good. That's a good turnout per registrations. How many of you remember that orientation for next week is tonight at seven? How many of y'all remember that? Anybody? If you've forgotten, if you have forgotten, you will get a text from the My Jason text list. You're welcome, Tammy. My Jason text list will, will, will be sent out today at noon. Okay. And let me say this to Harriet. Harriet, while you're there in the 888-831-1207, go ahead and send the text word my Jason, M-Y-J-A-S-O-N, all one word, and see if it tells you you're already in that list. Because I want you to get that text as well. I don't text very much from that list, but when I do text from it, I try to just let everybody know when a class is. And uh, sometimes I'll give more than a couple of hours warning, but typically it's just, um, you know, uh, like today there'll be a seven hour difference. That's, that's usually too long. I usually try to be somewhere between three, you know, three to four hours or less because we forget. I forget. That's, I forget. Typically, if you don't get a text, it's not, uh, it's not a technical issue. It's because I have forgotten, and I try not to forget. I got notes all over the place. Um, so um, let, let, I want to share this with y'all because um, it's a common thing. Um, as y'all might say, this is this is weird. Some of you will. It's not accepting what it, my Jason, M Y J A S O N. That's it's what's it telling you, Harriet? Anything? Um, sorry, wrong. It's telling you 888 831 1207. It should take my Jason, it should accept you. It's not a valid keyword. M-Y-J-A-S-O-N is not a valid keyword. That's not good. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, I'll work on that. I'll, I will work on getting you into my text list today. Yes, it is all one. It has to be all one word. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it matters if it's caps or not. I don't know that that actually is is going to be a factor. Used to be, but I don't think it matters if it's got caps in it or not. Now, still not taking it. I'll work on it after class, Harriet. I, I apologize for that. So here's the here's the the weird subject. Hemp. Have y'all? How many of you guys have? Uh, been around anything for the last, what, 10 years? Uh, marijuana, we'll call it marijuana. Marijuana or, or hemp products have become all the rage from CBD oil to now they're transitioning over into medicinal marijuana and other things of that nature. 
when we, and I want to say it like that because a lot of people work jobs that uh, skill drug screen, and yeah, I, know, I say that uh, with no pun intended, um, hemp products, if they're labeled hemp, should never affect the drug screen, never, okay? Now, if they la uh, label them um, to be a controlled substance, okay, you're not going to buy currently in today's uh, uh, market, you're not going to buy anything that's going to make you fail a drug screen that says hemp on it from anywhere like a Kroger or a Walmart. Okay. You have to go to the actual uh, pharmacy to buy uh, uh, autocorrect. Got it. Thank you, Harriet. You'll have to go to the pharmacy to buy ph uh, pharma pharmaceutical grade marijuana sold there or some sort of THC or other control substance uh, 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 there at the pharmacy or the, as they say now, the, the smoke shop or the whatever. Listen, I'm not talking about your, your vape shop or your local, um, um, uh, what is it, the quickie mark, okay? I'm, so, I'm talking about the stuff that's, I'm gonna consider illegal, right? Until it's legal everywhere, it's illegal. So when, when you're looking at hemp products and it says hemp, we talk about hemp hearts, hemp seed, and hemp oil. None of that is CBD. None of that CBD. I'm not saying that CBD, I'm not even gonna speak on C CBD for this moment. I'm just gonna really talk about hemp hearts and the three things that, that uh, well, let's say four. Okay, the four things that come. All of this is coming from a hemp seed, okay? and so the different strands of hemp do different things. Rope has been made out of hemp for, for centuries, clothing. Uh, um, and, and when I say centuries, I, I mean that hundreds of years, hemp has been in mainstream uh, uh, textile use uh, and especially um, rope, uh, rope construction, okay? Very uh, fibrous um, uh, pulp. The pulp of, a, of, of hemp is extremely durable. Now, um, the flowering versions of hemp have been, um, and especially the female version is where marijuana and all of its derivatives go to. The male version of hemp is uh, good for textile use. And they've come to understand through, um, it's, it grows really fast, and it's uh, so versatile. They, I mean, there's, they're making plastic out of it now. They're making uh, biodegradable, all kinds of stuff. I'm not trying to get off, off point here. I'm trying to let you understand. When you see hemp on something labeled H-E-M-P hemp, let your guard down a great, great deal. Okay, we're not talking about something that's gonna get us in trouble. Now, there is, however, when you, I've been to Kroger and bought hemp seeds that were not whole, okay? You don't want to put whole, uh, de, uh, uh, hold, I'm sorry, hemp seeds with the hull on them on anything and eat it. Ugh, not, 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 no good, yuck. Okay, when you hear us talk about hemp hearts, it is simply a hemp seed that the shell or the, the casing is no longer there. There, uh, the difference in one with the hull and without the hull is, is, well, that nutty, sweet deliciousness that a whole hemp seed tastes like, you won't taste that at all if you get some hull, okay? That, the hull is that bad. I'll give you an example. Have y'all ever had a pecan? A pecan, a pecan? Y'all ever had a pecan? <laughs> I say pecan, all right. And if you've ever had a pecan or a pecan out of the yard, taken two of them and smashed them together, or maybe uh, like we did at my grandmother's, we take the little tools and bust them open. They've got little bitty tools to scrape out the casing that's around the nut. And if it doesn't matter if you've got the most pristine nut out of a pecan, if you get a tiny speck, y'all follow me, of that casing in your mouth, you ain't tasting no pecan, right? How many of y'all know that? How many of you have ever went, 
and turned inside outwards because you had the hull of a pecan in your mouth. Right, yuck, that's it. <laughs> now, um, and now, so one thing to be aware of, right, when you're looking at um, a product and you're purchasing it is the fine print, okay? If you see hemp hearts and they're labeled hemp seeds, all you wanna look for is, the, is, is that one word, right? Hull. You look for hull. If you ever see what we refer to as hemp flakes, they take the hulled hemp seed or the hemp heart and they process them to remove a lot of the fat. Mind you, listen, when they're doing that, they're taking that fat and producing hemp oil. Okay. Put these two things together and your hemp oil is extremely healthy oil. Okay. Um, now it's different. It has a little different taste. You may or may not like it. You may or may not like to cook with it, but it's a very healthy oil. It's coming from the hemp heart. Okay. Those omegas that are so good about the category six hemp heart. When they translate those omegas out of the hemp heart, what's left is hemp flakes. They're high in protein, fiber, not so high in fat, which is why we consider a hemp flake to be a one plus two, okay? It's, an, it's a lean protein and a fibrous carb. Hemp flakes, lean protein, fibrous carb counts as a one plus two. They are less caloric. They have less calories in them because those high calorie fats have been taken out or processed out. So those two things split apart. You've got your hemp oil coming from the heart, okay? And you've got the hemp on the other side, you've got the hemp heart derivative, which is hemp flakes. Hemp flakes then get pulverized into, guess what? Hemp powder, okay? So hemp protein powder, when you see it, you may like it, you may not like it, I don't like it, okay? I don't like hemp oil, I don't like hemp powder, I like hemp flakes and I, and I love hemp hearts. So there's where I am on the spectrum, okay? But hemp powder or powdered protein, that's hemp protein, is simply that defatted hemp heart, the inner part of the seed, no, Nothing inside of that seed is going to cause you to come up positive on a drug screen. Remember this, just, I just want you to feel comfortable when you're eating these products. But now for the purpose of understanding these macros, I wanted to explain it like this. When we've got hemp with fat on one side, hemp, uh, hemp hearts or hemp oil, we got to know that it's high calorie and our portions need to be minded a little bit more, okay? When we've got hemp powder or hemp flakes on the other side, the, pro, the, 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 the portions can be more, we can have more of this because it has less calories in it per, uh, per tablespoon, let's say, per tablespoon, okay? So one to two tablespoons of hemp hearts is going to have a similar caloric uh, a range as four tablespoons of hemp flakes. Does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So you learned something about hemp hearts or let's just say hemp today. Um, we won't go into any other <laughs> lessons about hemp. Uh, shamefully, I could probably uh, talk to you about other hemp lessons, but we won't do that. Um, and anybody, does anybody, did I, did, I, did I not do a good job of explaining that to somebody? Some of I got questions about hemp um, that I can help with because I think, um, you know, we, we definitely talk about it. We definitely recommend it on our program. When you're having a hemp bar, we're talking about hemp hearts, okay? We're talking about hemp hearts, which is as, which is as close to natural hemp seeds as you'll ever want to eat. You can eat them with the hull, but remember, 
remember the pecan, you don't want to eat them with the, with the hulls, okay? You want them to be de-hulled or, or you want the hull out of there. All right. Um, don't be afraid of them. I, I'd encourage you to try them and, and, and certainly um, reap the benefits of them. Great nails, great hair, great um, uh, skin. Um, we're talking about uh, great for memory. Uh, the, the omegas uh, threes uh, and uh, sixes that are in hemp hearts are uh, without comparison. There's nothing natural that, I, I, that the last studies that I have been have read and, and can recall to mind, there is nothing that grows natural, nothing fish oil, krill oil, nothing that compares to the natural occurring omegas in a whole hemp part, okay? You wanna be healthy uh, and get natural um, uh, God-given nutrients from uh, uh, plants and seeds and animals. That is, there's your, your direct source for, um, the, the, the healthy omega fats, uh, that a number one uh, best for you stuff. Oh, maybe you learned something today. I don't know. Hope so. All right. I have held off long enough uh, in, unless, unless someone else has got some um, something that I need to get to. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've had a burning desire to uh, share a little bit more about what we talked about on Monday, but here it is. What is Thursday? How did, how did it get Thursday so fast? How did it become Thursday so fast? Um, we talked about, um, we talked about Jesus on Monday. This is going to be our spiritual portion. I, I talked too long on him, so I'll try to be, I'll try to be direct about this. Um, we talked about um, Jesus and his incomplete work that he wasn't able to finish as part of his plan on Monday, right? Do y'all remember that? The two of you remember we're doing good, uh, or I'm doing good, <laughs> because I'm one. I do remember. I got notes. If, and, and Jesus... I hope I hope if you don't know Jesus when when you, whenever you're you're with me that you at least hear his name. Okay, I may not be a, a a reflection of him, and I may do a poor job, but I I don't ever want to I don't ever want to uh, fail to tell you that uh, Jesus what Jesus done for me. He's he's definitely he's definitely um, brought peace and hope and joy and, and uh, power to my life that I never had without it, that I never had without it. And uh, meaning when I, when I was in total control of my life, I was never as powerful or as, or as, or as uh, filled with peace or love or joy that I have been since Jesus came into my life. And uh, that, that doesn't matter if I considered myself to be fat or thin or well, uh, none of those things mattered. I had a gaping hole inside of me until I had Jesus. And you couldn't see it sometimes, but I always knew it was there. And I didn't always know what it was until a man called Jesus filled it up. Now, now that I've said that, <laughs> And y'all still remember, I love you. Let's get on with this little lesson. I um, felt like my toes were broke off on Monday because um, because I, I've known that I that I have uh, that I'm called to preach for a long time, and I've not been in the role of of a, a preacher ever. Never been in the role of a preacher. Now I. I, I talk about Jesus a lot and I uh, witness a lot and I um, and I do this with you guys and not and and this may be my ministry this may be my pulpit this may be my thing uh, but um, I don't know but I don't know 
right? I don't know. I, just, I know when God pulls on me to, to, to get in the word, I do. And uh, when uh, I get in there, typically some something comes to me or, or and then I have to tell somebody about it. And maybe that's not what I think it is. But It lines up what, what I went over on Monday, doesn't it? And hopefully, maybe somewhere in your life, it'll line up with what, what where you're at. Because um, how, will they, how will they hear? How will they hear without a preacher? Uh, how will they hear without a preacher? That's what the Bible says. Um, and I, or anybody you know, that goes by preacher, pastor, minister, um, all of those people you've known in your life that you know currently or will ever know that have that title in but the front of or the end of or somewhere around their name are not who the Lord is talking about in that verse. Okay, we are to be the hands and feet and ears and, and eyes and mouth of Jesus as a body. And uh, certainly we may not all have the gifts of being the minister, but we're all called preach. Now, I've got a very mismanaged set of notes here from a couple of days ago. But I do want to pull up a verse or two and just talk to you about it. Um, how many ever heard of a man called John the Baptist? John the Baptist. John the Baptist was alive. He was a man that was alive back in the days of Jesus. Okay. And um, if you want to know a, a, a neat fact, John the Baptist as a fetus acknowledge Jesus. <laughs> That's a little a, a, hist, a little fact of history. Before John the Baptist was, was out of his mother's belly, he acknowledged Jesus as a fetus. Um, there's some history on that. And I'm not, that's not what I'm going to talk about, but I thought that was pretty cool when it came to my mind. Let me, um, let me read you this one little verse out of John chapter 1. And I think it'd be a great place to start. John chapter one, verse 19. Um, listen, to, listen to how this reads. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Who art thou? Sending, it won't be long before somebody asks, who is Cindy? Who is Barbara? Who are you, Dana? Who are you, Deb? And I want to ask you today, just like uh, this little testament from the Bible says, it says, do you have a record? That's my little note here. Do you have a record? And this is the record of John. John's got a record. Not a record that you, that you round on a, on a record player, but a recorded testimony. John has a record. I have a record. I know you have a record. And you know, Jamie, that you have a record. Now, does anybody else know that you have a record? This is the question that I'm putting to you. Do you have a record? Um, let's, let's look. We'll stay in John chapter 1 for a minute. I'm going to skip around if that's okay with you. And let's look for a second on. Um, let's see. Let's just go right quick to what um, the Bible says about John. You ready? John chapter one. This is John the Baptist. Again, chapter, uh, chapter one, verse six. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. <laughs> there was a woman sent from God whose name was Amy. Don't get mad at it. There was a woman sent from God whose name was Kimberly. There was a woman sent from God whose name was Tanya. Y'all following me? The same 
came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That's pretty rich. Harriet, did you know there was a woman sent from God named Harriet to be a witness and to bear witness of the light? That all men and women through him might believe? Woo wee. Is it getting hot? Is it getting hot? Let me read a little more. Here's another place. John chapter 1, verse 23. Skip around a little bit. That's okay. Who does John say he is? Here's what John. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Now, in my King James, I know Isaiah is Isaiah. Okay, it's not, it's not uh, any other prophet. It's Isaiah, Isaiah is Isaiah. How many of y'all know who Isaiah is or have ever read through some of the things of Isaiah. Isaiah was one of those people who the angels visited and said, I need somebody to speak for me. And he, the, the, they, were, they were talking uh, as uh, emissaries from the Lord. And, and oh, Isaiah said, um, after the, he said, you know, I'll go, send me, I'll speak. John's testimony is, I am one who the Lord has called to go and be his mouthpiece. Let me read it again. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Now, John was doing this as Jesus was literally showing up on the scene. Angela, how do we get our minds wrapped around this this little lesson today and make it real okay so if angela is one right is a voice crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord that means the lord is still about to show up at any moment but this gospel still needs, remember, go ye and preach the gospel, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Remember, as we're supposed, the, the, the Great Commission, right, as we're supposed to do this, hmm, Jesus is coming right behind us to bear witness. He's coming right behind us to fill my void in, inside of me because I had to hear it just like that. Hey, Get all, all your excuses out of the way. I've got to get, listen, here it comes, Jenna. Make straight the way, the, the path of the Lord. Here he comes. Here comes a man named Jesus. He's going to tell you about your whole life. He's going to whisper in your ear all your history. He already knows about it. He's going to let you know that. All right. We're not called to just receive this stuff and let it go on. Uh, in John, let me move over for just a moment to Matthew for a second. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Y'all might know this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, this is Jesus preaching in his time. Okay, now I could go back. I probably should go back. If I was preaching in a pulpit, I would go right back to 1 John because 1 John talks about Jesus being the light. And he came to bear witness of the light, although he wasn't the light. That's what 1 John tells you right there in those first couple of, of, of verses. Listen to what Jesus says in verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay? We are not light until the light of the world is inside of us. 
okay? So Jesus believed in works. Paul said we're not made righteous through works, but by faith. However, Jesus clearly believes in works. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, right? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Not necessarily the things that I do, but the power that I do them in, right? The things that you do, but the power that you do them in. Uh, I have another verse or two, just, just a few. Matthew, staying in Matthew, let's go to, to verse 28. Last, but last two verses of, of Matthew, which we already quoted, I'm pretty sure, before. Matthew, verse 19 and 20 from chapter 28. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given me in heaven and in earth. This is after he is resurrected. The same Jesus we believe in. How many of you believe in the resurrected Jesus? Right? The resurrected Jesus. The ascended into heaven Jesus. The one that sits at God at the right hand of God Jesus. If, if, if that's the one that we are believing in, listen to what Jesus says. He has been given all power in heaven and in earth. And he lives in heaven with God, sits at the right hand, making intercession for you and me. We're not going to be in trouble as long as Jesus is right. He's making intercession. He's our advocate. We are his, we are his hands and feet, his mouthpiece. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he says here. Now, go ye therefore. Go, works. Here we go. And teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Got stuff to do. Got stuff to do. Um, but Jason, I don't know that all that stuff makes too much sense for me because um, anytime I've ever thought about it, my flesh gets in the way or my feelings get in the way or my inadequacies get in the way. I, I don't, I'm not going to preach about, oh, well, I'll, I'll be taking way too much of your day. Where was that again? The last one, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. The very last two verses of Matthew. One last, one last place, and I'll probably say a little bit about this, is in Mark chapter 16, last chapter, last verses of Mark. Um. We've done this already, too. <laughs> I remember I, I quoted already today. Go ye all, go ye un, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said unto them, this is the same words Jesus spoke in Matthew, but this is how Mark recalled it when he is, his, when this gospel's being um, written down for us. Will y'all hear this for a minute? Because this is, to most of us, it doesn't matter, Patricia, what um, what um, translation you're reading out of. These verses are the ones where most of us get really um, in our flesh. Can I say that? We get in our flesh when we read these words in red, okay? Because it seems like... I'm not like those crazy Southern folks uh, that's out in them old country churches, right? Listen to what it says. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's a little different than what Matthew said, but listen. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay. I, I hope this, this goes well with you today. This is going to be my last couple of verses. It, this is... Uh, when we get prepared for salvation by hearing the word from somebody and we recognize we've got a, a dull, uh, gaping wound, open uh, place inside of us that uh, has been there since before we were born uh, until we get reconciled with the father who wants to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with us 
and it's made possible through his son. Once we hear that and we figure it out and we get in this relationship, uh, the warm fuzzies of how that uh, feels, that salvation feels changes to inadequate. Uh, the, the flesh shows up again. We have to learn how to, uh, to live a, 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 uh, a different way. Depending on how long we have been living a life um, of sin, let's say it that way, a living a life of sin or uh, without God, um, these things may sound extremely hard. Now, I'm going to keep reading. All these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Right? Cast out devils. What are devils? What are devils? They shall speak with new tongues. What is that? Speak with new tongues. What are that? What is that? They shall take up serpents. Right? What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and if they drink anything, uh, any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Okay. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is Jesus. Look, the words are in red, y'all. You got a red letter Bible. All those will be in red. Let me spend just a second here with you because, like I said, it doesn't matter what translation you're in. It's going to tell you you're going to handle serpents. Okay. And, and it may say snakes. It may change serpents to snakes, but there's no way to translate the words that are in those te that text without saying, drink poison, handle snakes. Okay? Now, you may say, okay, I'm done with Jesus. This is all fake. I don't, I'm, I, I, I'm, I am not, Angela, going to go and handle a serpent. This is not what I signed up. This is not the same Jesus that set me free. This is not, this, the, I, that, that's not where I'm going. You're thinking, Lord, Jason's telling me to go and pick up snakes. <laughs> Jason's telling me to go and drink some poison, right? This is what you tell me? No, it's not what I'm telling you. It's what Jesus is telling you. It's what Jesus is telling you. Now, I'm going to start with the very first thing he said one more time. Go ye into all the world. Okay. He didn't say go into heavenly places and sit with people that are saints and talk about Jesus. He didn't say go into the safe places or into the holy places and commune with the people that are just like you, saved, forgiven, uh, uh, righteous, and uh, well-to-do. He says that we've got to go. Uh, to the world, to the whole world. And what are we supposed to do when we get there, Millie? Preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. Is a snake a creature? Is a devil a, a preacher? Uh, uh, are devils? It says there, we're supposed to cast out devils. Now, some of us are working about, uh, worried about uh, arachnophobia, spider uh, 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 fear. Some of us are worried about, I don't know what snake phobia is. I'm just going to call it snake phobia. Some of us are sitting here thinking about snake phobia. I, I ain't touching no snake, right? Snake phobia. Ain't that, my wife, if you even show her a picture of a snake, she'll squeal and jump on the table. And, and it, there, it may be in Africa and she's in America, but if she, if it's on, she gets the, the heebie jeebies. Look, I, I know it's being literal, and Jesus was probably being literal, but I'm trying to talk about this in a spiritual way, okay? If your excuse for not sharing the, sharing the gospel is you don't know how to say it, then you're going to have to, like it says here, they shall speak with new tongues, right? There's your, you don't know it. You don't understand it, but when you're in that situation, listen, but because you're going to be in that situation where you know you're supposed to say it. Have you talked to Jesus? 
Do you know Jesus? Everything inside of you is going to be saying, this is when you have this talk. But your tongue, but your mind saying, my tongue don't know how to communicate that. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said they shall speak with new tongues. Your little tongue will waggle about him when you open your mouth. You'll be able, it says, to take up serpents. You'll be able to actually go out into the world where the, where the slimiest, most dangerous, them snakes ain't slimy, but that's the way I see them. I've, I've always seen them as slimy. The slimiest, evilest, hissingest, deadliest, poison-filled uh, representatives. Uh, Millie said the devil was a serpent. All of those things, right? All of those things, you'll be able to go where that is and waggle your tongue about Jesus. You'll be able to drink poison and not be hurt, right? Does that mean that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt? No, that means quite the opposite. It means that to me, okay, spiritually written, spiritually discerned, whatever, listen, How many of you have ever heard of an apologist? An apologist. You never heard of an apologist? Some of the, the great men of God from old would get into debates about doctrine with one another. And you may think that these things are, are unholy or not right or divisive, whatever. But an apologist knows the word or their uh, version of the word, and they make an argument, an orally, typically, an argument about what God means by something. They're a Christian apologist. Same, same thing for us. In order to have that dialogue, you've got to be able to drink some poison and not be hurt. You've got to be able to take in what somebody else thinks it is without it changing your mind and hurting you. Now, you may think that that's not a good interpretation of that. But let me tell you, there's a lot of people that are waggling their tongue about things, okay, that the Bible says or that other that things say to disprove things. And when it tickles our ears and we believe we understand these things, it changes our mind. What does it do to most of us, to me, the most? It closes my mouth. And we're not, we're not, it, it, I think these things are laid out in order. Jesus didn't say, you'll be able to drink poison and not die. He said, no, go ye <laughs> into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The snakes, the, the ones that are, that are making you drink the poison, all of them. You know what we get? I'm going to wrap it up right here. Do you know what we get when we do this? Anybody want to guess? We'll get a record. That's what we'll get. We'll get a record. This, right, we'll go back to John really fast. John chapter 1, verse 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from, Jews, from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? We'll get a record. That's what we're, that's what we're called to be a bridge between the world and Jesus will his mouthpiece Jesus has been given all power on heaven and in earth that means you got Jesus you got all power as long as you got him well you have faith today to execute that that authority I hope so 
Okay, y'all.